Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by ID8 Software. Be sure to check out all of their great Revit applications designed to increase your productivity. We have begun recording the podcast called BIM Thoughts, where we think about BIM techniques and technologies. But it seems like we think about other things as well. Like today, we have Dana Del Philippi, which I got right, I think, and Carl Storms. We're going to be talking about AU and what the heck we want to learn from AU and what we've learned from AU and what we want to get out of AU this year in its new virtual format. So this topic was Carl's idea, so I'm going to let him start. Yay, Bill, Yay. for letting me start. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that there would be uh, with the the change, you know, change. this year being uh, <laughs> virtual and that it's free so everyone can attend. It is free. Yeah, that uh, yeah. it might be worth sort of checking out what's up there. I mean, it's going to be a little bit different. There, The amount of live classes is very small. So the only thing that's actually uh-huh. going to be live content is going to be uh, roundtables, panels. Oh, and uh, the keynotes, of course. So everything uh, other, else is pre-recorded. Pre-recorded. So the class oh. I did pre-recorded. All the all the labs, all the instructional demos, all of that stuff is all pre-recorded, and it all goes live. Available on demand only. There you go. Available on demand. Look yes. at that. Available on demand only. Yep. So that means you were able to edit it. Uh, if you wanted to. So you were... You were given the option to uh, record with Autodesk or to Uh self-record. And uh, originally, they didn't really want people to self-record, but, you know, everyone's been doing videos and stuff for so long. They finally said, okay, if you want to do Uh it yourself, go ahead. Uh, I chose to have Autodesk look after all of that Uh and just treated it like a regular session. So I got a time slot. I had 60 minutes. They said go, and I did it. And you you went. And I went. Um, One take. One take. Now, they, they do have professionals there, so there was a, a few coughs that they said they could edit out. And at one point uh, near the end, my cat uh, decided to step on the clicker and fast-forwarded through 15 slides and then <laughs> fast-forwarded back through. Uh, and so I, I explained that that was my cat, and, you know, it's the way that it is this year. And the editor agreed that that's something we should leave in the in the video. So. I, I think that is good that you left that in the videos. That's that's your cat videos for AU. Exactly. You you got to get that exactly. in there. Exactly. It's so uh, funny. It gives that element of being live. It's, now it's almost like being on a Zoom and someone walking behind you and seeing they're on Zoom and say, "Oh shit!" and run out of the room. That's exactly what it's like. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> Carl, I don't know whether you have kids. Bill, I think you have older kids. I have an older kid, yes, who's not a kid anymore. Yeah, she's adult. Uh, twenty-two. You. Twenty-two and a half. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Carl, do you have do you have little ones running around over there? Just the cats. I, I do not. The cat's the dog, and a stepdaughter who's twenty-seven. So. Well, I have noticed in a lot of videos, and I guess they've made a lot of commercials about it at this point, where the yeah. kids are running around in the background in the video, mm-hmm. and you know, mom's trying to block them with her Folgers coffee or whatever <laughs> it is, right? Um, you know, and the kid is just thinking it's like the funniest game ever. Like, do these kids not get punished? I would, I would like not be able to live tomorrow if really? that were me. You would not be. It's a good thing you didn't do that because you wouldn't be here today. Oh, I know. I know better. I have a little bit of common <laughs> sense. I'm mean, forced to. <laughs> it was a life and death matter. I have no idea what would have happened if I did that when I was younger. If I would have been here today to, sh- to prove it or not. Well, so see, my I mom think... had a limousine service, and oh. so she, she had a, a phone line that would call into the home, and so she worked from home primarily. You know, she was. She yeah. wasn't out driving mm-hmm. um, her limo, and right. yeah, if that if that line if it rang, oh my gosh, you better don't answer be it. Be quiet. There better be <laughs> absolute silence. Pause your video game. You know, yes. whatever it is, because whatever it takes. Mom's at work now, and uh, yeah, it was it was a serious matter. Well, yeah, because she didn't want to be the limo driver that had uh, 
that wasn't professional. Right. You need to be a professional limo driver and you got to do the whole persona. But yeah, so I, I, we, we, I guess we can all in some way form, shape, or another understand the cat, Carl, and the flipping through the video. Yes, it the just, cat. It just wanted to be the there videos. and you know, be in the well, video, too. Maybe the cat was bored and said, I've seen these. Let's uh, move along. <laughs> Going <laughs> well, too was, slow, Carl. It, it was it actually uh, it was dinner time. <laughs> it, was, so it, it was, in fact, a speed it up. It's time to feed me. Enough talking. my tender vittles? That's exactly it. Do they have tender vittles up in Canada? I'm sure we do. Uh, our our, our kitties do you... don't get that. They get fed better no, than we do. They get they get Tim Hortons. They yes, Tim Hortons cat food. <laughs> Tim bits, kitty bits, <laughs> donut holes. <laughs> This is starting to this is starting to sound like a conversation we'd have at AU after a few of the the free beverages. I yeah. saw that. I saw that tweet. I uh you know what? I did a a BIM thoughts with him and um uh, I lost the the his audio for didn't get recorded. So it was just me agreeing and ahhing and laughing. So we need to get him back on. I'll get on that. You get on that. And we'll get, get on him on. on. I, I think so Carl, that's what one are of... some courses you're looking forward to this virtual yes. conference. This season. virtual conference. Well, I've, I've, conference. I've been perusing and as, as seems fitting, the, the first thing I looked at was uh, uh, computational design and, and dynamo. And the first uh -huh. one that really, really jumped out at me is from uh, Jacob Small. And it's got a great name. Generative Hogwarts. design. Yep, generative design at Hogwarts using tech instead of magic. Wow. Best name at the whole of of AU. Absolutely. This AU actually, is still go ahead. I sent him a message and said that I was like, "You have an awesome name." So yeah. I I actually bought the the six thousand pack of Legos. It's like six thousand pieces. Really, sixty two hundred somewhere in that range of Hogwarts Castle. Uh huh. Did you build it? Yeah, it was like the best thirty-five building hours of my life. Really? <laughs> did you do it in a row? No, 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 no. And I always did it with a buddy, with a friend. Oh, you did? Yeah, and I actually recorded How'd it. How'd you do that virtually? I, I made it. Well, this was a, I guess, when it first came out. It was <laughs> okay. Two or two years ago, I guess exactly, almost two years ago. Almost. Yeah, I have a, a GIF of me doing it. It's like a, I don't know, 40-second GIF of the 35 hours. Wow. So a second oh, an hour. Yeah, we'll have to about. share it on BIMthoughts.com. Yeah. So is Hogwarts still uh, together? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you look at it with wonder every day? Yeah. It's actually yeah. currently on my dresser. In my Did, bedroom. Now, have you purchased more Hogwarts stuff and done additions to the Hogwarts castle? Not yet, only because of the move. But I am planning on making a dining room table out of the castle. I want to encase it in plexi. Yeah. And yeah, like How nerd tall out is completely. It? Like, why not? It's it's oh. twenty four inches tall at its highest. Twenty four inches tall at its peak. at the highest turret. That is too tall for a coffee table. No. No, no, I'm sorry. A dining room table, a dining room oh. table, because it's gonna have some legs. Did I say coffee table? I meant no. Coffee. You said dining room table, but I was thinking it'd be a great coffee table. Yeah, no, I was thinking that at first, and then I did some dimensions, and I was like, yeah, Bill, you, you, yeah, no, that. it's yeah, it's too tall. It's too tall. Unless you want to like look over it to see your TV. I don't think anybody wants to do that. No, or you could just look to the side. Was, I mean, it's plexi, so you can kind of see through it. Oh, you could get the invisibility cloak and put it on top of it <laughs> when you want to watch yes. TV. Yes, now, now you're on it. Uh-huh, yeah. But I'm actually, I'm seeing a lot of things on Forge. Just building Forge. things in general, right? The Legos, the Hogwarts, the, Legos, the generative designs, the the Forge. Yeah. A lot of a lot of topics that I'm really intrigued by. But I think generative design is probably... You know, with Jacob's awesome topic on mm -hmm. Hogwarts and magic. Mm. Um, Here's a good one. 
Generative liquor store design. That seems fitting. That does seem fitting for an AU class. And who is the speaker on this? That is uh, Sander Seeger. Sander Seeger. Seeger. S E. Hmm. I wonder if he does many liquor stores. I, I would assume if so. He does. 4,000 square meters. He's from the UK's. Mm-hmm. 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 I think that's mm-hmm. one thing that that will be different. Is that, I mean, I know a lot of people mm-hmm. come to the the Vegas event, but this is truly worldwide. So as you're it scanning is. through the uh, the possible topics, there's a little bit of everything. So you yeah. could watch one of these classes in a different language and know what it's like for a beginner to learn Revit today. <laughs> Interesting way to well, look at it. Hey, it doesn't look like my English filter worked. Are you guys having the same situation? I'm seeing a um, lot of non-English classes. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm letting them all flow. Automatic BIM standards checking with BIM 360. A lot of BIM 360 in here. A lot of BIM. Mm-hmm. Well, BIM 360 is a big topic nowadays. It is, especially yeah. You're right with the uh, yeah current with state the, of affairs. Mm-hmm. With the current state, yes. Interesting. I'm scrolling. I like to That's see some more classes on. on BIM 360 and actual documents like PDFs, and there's some of those. Yeah. Like we were yeah. talking about with, yeah, John. with PDFs and the markups. That's, that's you, John Jensen, if you're still doing that thing at Autodesk. He was that. But as we talked with uh, Carla, also the uh, issues. Yes. I think the BIM 360 issues are clashes. Uh-huh. Right? I think that seems like a really interesting topic as well that hopefully they're going to be expanding on at AU. You know, I want to look... drop some things, right? I feel like mm-hmm. that's probably going to be one of the big things there. Because, you know, all of this, you know, culture around BIM 360 uh-huh. with the current state of things and everything kind of moving to the cloud. You know, right. what right. else could it be? It's got to be something. This Moving is a, up to BIM 360, migrating existing civil 3D projects to the cloud. There you go. I uh, I Googled. What did I Google? Uh, oh, I forgot what I Googled. Not Googled. The the equivalent of Googling. I'm, I'm within, sure Google remembered. Yeah. Uh, Navisworks managed to see if there was still interest in that product. And there was 62 that came up. But the one that I found that had a, a, a great name and actually sounded kind of intriguing uh-huh. Uh, bringing ISO 19650 to Silicon Valley, BIM wow. challenges on the BART extension. Really? And if and if I'm correct, the BART that's the the San Francisco Rapid Transit, correct? Yeah, so it's the Bay Area Transit. There you go. There, that's what the BA stands for. It's not just about uh, the uh-huh. Simpsons. Right. Bay Area probably Rapid Transit. There you go. That would be I'm, it. Maybe I don't know. I didn't Google. I didn't Google to look it up. So this project worked with 25 firms, 10 disciplines, and 49 locations. Ouch. Well, and it says here, Alan Flack has a clash modeling without social distancing using BIM 360 model (laughs) coordination and Navisworks together. Ooh. (laughs) Nice. Doesn't necessarily look like he's talking about issues within BIM 360 or the clash section built into... There's still vault classes. I noticed there was a topic you could filter by products, and one of them was Tinkercad. Sadly, Tinkercad. there was no Tinkercad classes. Really? How, yeah. how could that be? Especially with the kids at home, too. I, I have a Tinkercad have a class. With you. I have yep. a Tinkercad class on my YouTube channel. I show how to make. What do I show how to make? Now I'm going to have to look. I don't remember. You make uh. a. Uh, a roll cage for a Jeep and a windscreen for something else. No, not in Tinkercad, though. I did that in AutoCAD. Well, what did you do in Tinkercad? You made something in Tinkercad to 3D print. I, I did. I think it was Was it a pipes? A, yeah, pipes, and the one was a pillar for the Jeep, not the whole windshield. Just oh, the, the windshield. Yeah. The windshield. The windshield for the Jeep or the Land Rover. One of the two. I'm scrolling. I think it was the windshield. Yes. You know, I have 69 videos now on my Bill's Workbench YouTube channel. 
you know what those would be great for when you're can you can you download it or can you mark to watch offline YouTube? I think you can if you pay the if you premium have, if you thing. Pay the premium. Those would be Is great. It like YouTube Red. Oh, I did the combine harvester blade. It looks like in Tinkercad. Ah. Yes, did that in the Tinkercad. That turned out really well. Okay, so Tinkercad. Mm-hmm. What was the other thing I was thinking of? So what do you want to learn this year? What's your coming up on 2021? We're getting close. Now's the time to start thinking about what you want to learn, what your uh, your learning goal for this year is. I actually really want to learn Python. I have been trying, and it's just unfortunately something I just continuously put on the back burner. Yeah. But when we were talking about... Hi, Revit. I think that that would be a perfect opportunity to reverse engineer Pi Revit to learn Python mm-hmm. because wonderfully, everything is open, right? You can go in there, you can look at all the code, mm-hmm. you can figure out how all of that stuff is put together. And so I think that would be a really wonderful practical way. So that's my goal to reverse okay. engineer Pi Revit to learn Python. Wow. 2021 goals. 2021 goal. Nice. Well, that, Python. Okay. That, Carl. That, that ties nice into Dynamo 2 with a lot of those old uh, Python nodes because you can click on it and see what's on the inside. Yeah. That's the, the downside to the C sharp or zero touch nodes. You can't see the magic. Definitely. Right. You Definitely. can't see the. Uh, what do they call that? It's not the magic, not the. It's, you can't see how the sausage is made. <laughs> that's That's the term. I, I got to tell you, that's not the first thing that came to my mind, Bill. Well, it was mine. It was mine. Because, um, you know, who knows what's in sausage? Yep. Don't ask, just uh, eat. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, what what I would like to IKEA. learn, what uh-huh. I would like to learn is why at conferences like AU in 2020, we're still uh-huh. seeing classes dedicated to moving from uh, AutoCAD to Revit or from 2D to 3D. Yeah, why is that? You know why? Because um, it's an easy class. Fair enough, but they, they also there's people that are interested, and I guess maybe the idea is that the the main the main parts of the industry, you know, the 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 large architects, the large engineering firms, the large general contractors, mm-hmm. they've gone that, but now other industries, sub trades, mom and pop shops, are starting to come into maybe maybe that's why they're still out there you know what what astounded me the other day you probably don't but i'm going to tell you um the youngins coming out of the schools like dana they don't know autocad they know revit they know rhino and some of them don't even know sketchup anymore and so when we have an autocad project we're like who knows autocad so that we can get people to to help do that work. So I think it's I think it's going around the other direction. Well, and even I've I mean I've found people that have professionally not used AutoCAD in so long that uh-huh. it's like you know if you don't speak Spanish for five years you get rusty. Right. right. Yeah, it's kind of the same way. Mm-hmm. You you call it two X's instead of Dos Equis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew that was right. going to come in there. <laughs> we were talking earlier about the next something. But I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. You'll Good have call. to you'll have to comment on the BIM thoughts to get that joke on the next one. It's a good one. Go. It made it made Carl blush. It did. Just a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. I'm still scrolling through all of these classes. Oh, what do I want to learn this year? No, what what do you really want to learn? What technology do you want to learn this year, Carl? What technology do I want to learn? Yeah. Uh, I would I wouldn't mind picking up a little bit of Python myself. I dabbled in the the C sharp and uh-huh. it's it's one of those things where when when I played with the C sharp, everybody at the time was saying, "Ah, don't do Python, do C sharp. There's more things you can do with it as far as add-ins and things like that." Uh-huh. And then I'm like, "But Python's kind of cool too." And there's so the much whole, stuff outside of the industry right. you can do with Python. All the cool kids are in Python. Yeah, so I learned a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit of JSON in there too, just to just to add 
some extra fun to my my uh, yeah enjoys. When you start learning Python, Dana, remember this: Python is a stickler for formatting indents, tabs versus spaces, things like that. It's a stickler for that. And it's case sensitive. So remember that too. Which we're so used we, to with Revit and, and Dynamo already, right? With code yeah. blocks and strings and different things like that. Right. But the the yeah. tabs and spaces versus tabs versus spaces, it it wants one or the other. Mm-hmm. And and that's the big uh, the big debate on programming is tabs the, versus spaces. The one thing that got me really excited, or one of the things that uh-huh. got me really excited about the PyRevit example that we heard, um, was unfortunately every time I seem to take a Py or Python course, they seem to equate it to like cats or you know breeds of dogs or you know something like that. And I, I don't get me wrong, I love to hear examples and you know. Mm-hmm. those types of things and how you can break it down and, and think about it maybe a different way. But I've always been dying for somebody to just be like, okay, to do this in Revit, this is how you do it. You want to grab something with Python and maybe it is baby steps, right? Maybe you mm-hmm. really do have to like think about it in lots of different ways. But, you know, I've w- luckily have a development team at work and, you know, to get them to help me with Python in any way, I feel like I have to come to them educated. So I always go on to Guy's website, the Revit API docs, and try to figure out, you know, some sort of way that they might be able to call for things in the API before I ask them to. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like once you have all of those tools down and you kind of understand the at least the resources that you have, um, I don't know. Maybe I obviously have not learned Python yet, so that it, I'm you know it is very very difficult, um, and it, it's like learning a language. I I still to this day am dying to learn Spanish and can't because it's I don't know it's just that type of brain. I'm not that type of brain. Yeah, me neither. I um uh, I find I found Python easy to learn. Um I had a harder time with C and C sharp than I did with Python. Python seemed a little bit more logical to me than C and C sharp. Um also PHP was easy for me to pick up. Those two languages are pretty close to each other. Um, when did you start to learn those languages? Uh 2 years ago probably is when I started really getting into PHP and Python when it clicked. But but here's the thing that and this I figured out this year. This this little tip I'm going to give you I just figured out this year and I'm going to share it with the world right now. Don't learn a computer language or any technology because you you want to learn it. Learn it because you need to learn it in order to do something. You have a problem. It can't be achieved in any other way. It can be achieved other ways. That's okay. But you go, you know what? This problem, I can. I know I can solve this problem with Python. So let's learn Python to solve this problem. Because now you're, well, I think you're that's interested the in thing it. about PyRevit, right? Is right. He's already gone in there and solved all of these beautiful problems that Revit right. really can't handle. And so by being able to reverse engineer that and look at mm-hmm. it and say okay i know what he the end goal is mm-hmm. right i know that this piece of code has been written to you know delete filters that aren't in use because i probably right. won't go with the pattern maker that's probably a really really tough one yeah you gotta right? like, maybe try to yeah. maybe try to stick with one of them <laughs> stick with maybe. something you know yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, by understanding what the ends, the means is and how yes. to, you know, maybe even work backwards in, the, in a way that you would with Dynamo, you know, mm-hmm. and you're kind of diagramming like, okay, in the end, I need to set this parameter. So before I get there, I need to be able to select this element. And before mm-hmm. I get there, I need to be able to, I don't know, concatenate these values together, whatever it is, right? Um, so being able to understand that, you know, the problem that he's, he's mm-hmm. solving and, you know, how he's doing all of that within Python in a wonderfully annotated way, um, you know, hopefully 
I will have success as I know others have. But see, the thing is, is you've got to have a problem to solve. You can't just go in and say, oh, well, I want to, I'm going to go and look at how he did this with rooms because I completely understand rooms and I built this before. You're not going to learn it as well as if you didn't have something already. So, for example, I had a great opportunity opportunity to learn the the form stuff and the little power app stuff that's inside of Teams, and we sat down with the with the uh, with the guy Alexis, you know Alexis, and uh, he was getting ready to show me the thing, and I realized, you know what, I don't I don't have a problem I need to solve, so I can't really get my head around this application and this stuff unless I have a problem to solve. As soon as I get a problem that I know I can solve with those two things, then I'll schedule some time with you and we'll go through it and try to figure out how to solve that problem together. Because that's how I learned the best. I need to solve a problem. Yeah, and that's totally how I learned Dynamo is with uh, occupancy. Right. It was really the, the calculating values using a key value. Right. Which can't be done in a formula within Revit natively. Right. You had a problem you needed to solve, and you knew the Dynamo could do it. So you you learned Dynamo enough to get that solved and done, and then you it just expanded from there. And oh man, was I excited when I got that to run without? Warnings. Oh, I can only imagine. Only imagine. Yes, but the the key there, or the the subtle tweak to what you're saying there, Bill, is that yes, it's much better to learn whatever it is, uh, C Sharp, mm-hmm. Python, Dynamo, with a problem to solve. Right. But before you try to convert that into a, a script, a graph, a program, essentially a way to automate or speed up the process, you have to be able to solve the problem first. So the software right. isn't going to solve the problem. You have no. to know the problem and be able to solve the problem. So you mm. have to you have to you know write it out do a flow chart or whatever to understand how mm-hmm. to get from A to B to solve it and then use the software to, to improve upon that solution with automation or whatever. And having right. that, that understanding is really going to kick that, well, that learning and retaining. Here's the other thing. If you, if you step back a little bit at the problem, you're going to find out, and this is where I think a lot of people fail is they step back and they look at, the end solution, and then try to figure out how to get there. Or give up because they don't know how to get to the end solution is is a better way to phrase it. You don't need to know how to get to the end of the solution. You need to know what the solution, what, what, what it needs to be at the end. But you don't need to know how to get there. You just need to know how to get to the first step. And once you get to the first step, then... You can move to the next step and move to the next step and move to the next step. And before you know it, you've reached the end and you've reached the solution. I think a lot of people have challenges in that they can't just let the solution come to them. You you, you need to just say, okay, I know what I need to do first. I know how to do that thing. Let's go and do that thing and, and get it done. And about halfway through that thing, Or three quarters through that thing, you go, okay, I got that step done. Now I need to do this thing in order to get to the next step. And you find out, well, the next one, maybe that's not it. Maybe it's the other one. And that's okay because you're learning those steps that you need to do in order to get to that end goal. So don't be afraid of that end goal being being out of your reach, being out of your knowledge base. It's okay. You just need to know the next step. Absolutely. So, what the hell do I want to learn this year? What did I learn this What did I learn this past year? I learned how to restore Matchbox cars. There that was go. unexpected. I didn't expect to do that. My goal was to learn Tableau better, but I didn't do that, and that's okay. This year, I, I need to learn Power BI better. Me too. That's another one of mine. Thank you, Bill. That's that's one I want to get to this year, and I think that one's achievable because I have things I want to work on, I want to make. I've already made a few reports in Power BI, which is good. I would love to be able to do reports as well as Gis- Giselle does reports, or as pretty as she does her reports. Yeah, I think that's part of the Tableau experience. 
That's you can do that in Power BI as well. Absolutely. My challenge is is I can't get it. I can visualize what I want it to be, but I can't get it down my arm <laughs> and through the mouse and into the keyboard and into the computer. And that's been my challenge for a lot of years. Like with design, that's why I, I'm not an architectural designer. That's why I'm a computer geek because I don't have that ability to get that design down my arm. And that's okay. I've realized that. And I've moved on and I've done other things, other great things instead. Heck, we created a podcast about it. And um, so, yeah, I want to learn Tableau and I want to learn how to do things. I want to learn to think differently about well, I Power BI, not Tableau. I want to learn to think differently about the reports than what I'm doing today so that they tell a story instead of just give just regurgitate data out in a different format. Looks like there's a course on Assemble in Power BI by Cirque really? and Sen, connecting design, schedule, quantities, and cost. Well, that's cool. Yeah. There's also one on Forge and Power BI that I passed a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to learn how to make knives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill. Oh, I just couldn't help myself. Do you watch Alex Steele on the YouTube? I do not. He oh, is he's that. a guy that does forging. He is so darn entertaining to watch. Even if you don't watched, like forging. Is it Forged and Fire, that show? on? It's sort of Discovery like that, but this guy like is, uh, he's much more entertaining than that. Is, is he like the guy from Ireland, Scotland, but lives in Maine? Yeah. Yeah, I have no, seen No, he lives in Montana. Montana. I have seen a few of his, and he makes like yes. massive swords. Yeah. He made a massive sword for uh, How Ridiculous. Yep. Have you watched that YouTube channel? No. How Ridiculous with the Australian guys? I think I've I am, seen bits and pieces. I am so sorry to introduce you to that because that is one you will uh, definitely get into. And before you know it, you have been, been watched, binge watched way too much. They're fun. All right. Power BI. I am looking at the Power BI classes. Power BI. Tracking your issues using Power BI. Let's look at all these Power BI classes. There's a lot of fabrication classes, Revit to fabrication. Lots of fabrication classes. Should I learn Rhino or should I learn Fusion 3D to draw my little widgets and gidgets for the Matchbox cars? Do you want to? I would say Rhino just because of the ability with Rhino inside now. I know. What, what did you say, Carl? I said, did you want to pay for the software or did you want it to be free? Well, I have licenses for both. Well, then that doesn't matter. I was just thinking that the, uh -huh. uh, was it Fusion 360, where you can do it on the web and 3D print. But if you have licenses. Yeah, no, I have that's licenses good. for both. I, I, yeah. For full-blown Fusion. I have accesses to licenses for both. How's that sound? There you go. I'm not paying. My, the company has the licenses in their named user network licenses, and I can just jump on and use it and give it to somebody else when I'm done. Um, I don't know. I don't know which one to learn. All the cool kids are going to Rhino these days, it seems like. It seems like. I, I, I'm not cool then. You're not cool? You, you're. Uh, what are you doing these days? Uh, I'm doing a lot of BIM track these days, but that's a whole other different conversation. Well, that's a whole different <laughs> conversation. That's, that's what helped you buy a new house. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I think Ronald's really cool. But kind of like you mentioned earlier about how you went into the the – Compute, not computer science, uh, you know, the BIM computer techie stuff that we all got into instead of the right. design side is that, you know, I got into architecture or the architecture field because uh -huh. of the models and wanting to create that stuff. But right. in my brain, it always comes out as a square. It's uh -huh. always function first and then form second. And that's not the right. way to do it. Same kind of thing with Rhino. I feel like I would be wasting the power of that tool to create a square box, which is what it's always going to be when I design it. Mm hmm. How did you do with Formit? Did you design cool things in Formit? Yep, they were squares. They were squares, but they were cool. <laughs> they were cool squares. Yeah, I, I liked the idea of what it did and how it could bring stuff in and how it mm -hmm. tied into uh, to Dynamo. And the really cool thing, how it had a, how's the the plugins that work with uh, uh, JavaScript that you can write your own little coding mm -hmm. for. Uh, yeah. That's another thing that's done some – it sort of like was on life support. 
and they've really uh, yeah they came back on that one didn't they they did which is rare um, it, yeah usually when they aren't I don't know when you don't usually come back like that yeah exactly uh, yeah. yeah that one that one did some good the, uh, there must be something else going on with format in the 360 world for that to come back to life. In my opinion, they've got they've got bigger plans for the technology than format. That is probably it, how it ties in with things back. That's probably it. because when you think about it, uh, uh, what was it called? Way way back when Vasari Project Vasari that was around for years mm-hmm. that started that started Dynamo and all those other things. Mm-hmm. That's what format kind of evolved into. So maybe you're right. Maybe it's the the basically mm-hmm. the testing branch for mm-hmm. whatever's next. Yeah. Maybe so. Interesting times. Hmm. Hmm. Want to bring those guys on and talk to them about it too. I agree. See where they're going. Interesting ideas. All right. It looks like we're we're All already right. past an album. We've just been been chatting away, talking about AU, talking. We about have the been. It's been fun. This has been a uh, a sitting at the bar session. It has been. That's exactly what it's been. And with yeah. with that with the with that in mind, I thought it might be cool to sort of end with one of your. Uh, your fond AU memories as were of days gone past where we could go to the AU. Bar. Oh, I got a great, great one. There was this, um, when I worked at the uh, reseller US cat, there was this nice girl there that, um, Christina was her name. She was in the Hawaii office, not Christina, um, Williams. Who we all know from BIM thoughts, but a different one, Christina. And she did a class in AU on taking stuff between Revit and something else. It was either Inventor, Format, or something. I, I don't remember the other thing, but that's neither here nor there. And so the and this was her very first time in AU, her very first presentation that she was going to give at a conference. So you know, first time. She's very nervous. And so we're walking down to t- to find her room the, the the night before. We go, okay, let's go find the room. Let's uh, walk you in there, and you know, then you can get to lay the land, and, and you'll feel a lot better because then you won't have to worry about any of that stuff. You can just concentrate on your presentation. She goes, okay. So as we're walking to the room, I said, now don't worry, it's probably not going to be that big because you know it's your first time. She goes, oh, no, they said it was big. I said, it's not big until you get to the room and there's presenter screens in front of you as well. When you get presenter screens in front of you, then you got a big room because it's too wide because there's no screen behind you. I said, don't worry. We walk in, and once you know it, it's the big room, three wide. (laughs) It's got two presenter screens, one on either side of the stage. (laughs) And the big three things on the back. So she was like, ah! But it was so funny. But she did well. I went to her class. She did a great job. She she survived and, and did her class. But it was just funny that um, the things that I was saying that not to worry about were there in that room. Way to go, Bill. Way, way to calm yeah. her down and then... And then yeah, and then, and then, and then uh, you know. So then we went to the bar and drowned in our sorrows. There you go. Well, well done. Well played. <laughs> Carl, what's your AU story? Ah, uh, there's so many. There's so many. Um, so many. I've got so, I'll, and I'll come up with two quick ones. Uh, the okay. first one for those of you that have been to a few AUs, I remember how exciting I was uh, when I found out that AU was going to be at the Venetian again in 2016. Uh, because the walk from the hotel rooms to the conference center was so much shorter than it was when it was at Mandalay Bay a few years before. And for okay. those who have never been to Mandalay Bay, they're like, what are you talking about? You walk for miles in the Venetian to get to the conference center. It's yeah. At least double or triple that in Mandalay Bay. Yeah. Especially when you stay at the Luxor. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that, mm-hmm. that was one of them. Uh, getting only 10,000 steps instead of 20,000 to get to the conference <laughs> hall was, was a bonus. Um, and the other one was one of my, not my first class, but one of my earlier sessions at AU was on format, as a matter of fact. And mm-hmm. it was in one of the big rooms. I think it had 270 or 80 uh, people in there. 
but I decided to open up the uh, the communication platform where you could all be working in the same the same model at the same time. Oh, uh, normally I'd done it with four or five people while there was. 280 people in there and so i crashed yeah. the entire format server there live <laughs> while i was doing my presentation so <clears throat> so that was uh, that was that was a fun experience that's where you say no, okay, that's the second time you've done that i i seem to have a, a, you, you a talent to crash at, everything you at did that built, at built yeah, one year built in toronto yeah in toronto yeah, yeah you uh every yeah. everyone opened up the model and it was did the conversion for the next version and ate up all yep. the cpu and all killed all the labs Yes, it did. I th- Let me tell you. I, I think that was – was that Tor- – yeah, Toronto is the no, one no. also where one of the servers actually passed away because it got too hot. That was the one. That was the same one because that was the first – the first session, so I had all of the people upgrade their model, which which killed it. And then in the uh-huh. other room over, um, somebody was giving a session. They had them install an app. And, of course, because it wasn't a desktop. And you, you guys all of melted that, yeah. the server. But on the, on the upside, <laughs> after that – IT and the people that were looking after that got on it, fixed it, and it ran perfectly for the rest of the conference. So I really, we did them a favor by getting it out of the way <laughs> yeah. early. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dana, what's your AU story? You know, I've only been to one AU. Well, then you should have one good story. I should have one good story. <laughs> at, at least one that you can tell. There's probably more, but we, we can't say that on the podcast. Yeah. Well, so my first AU, I decided to present <laughs> just like a normal person would do, right? With all of the stress and everything like that going to right, conference. Right, right. Uh-huh. And of course, they put me at the last time slot in the last day. Oh, God. Well, that's easy. Yeah. Everybody was tired. Well, the thing is, is that with my anxiety, I am like oh, dreading the right. idea that like somebody is going to say something or I'm going to, I'm going to see a course or listen to a presentation and somebody's uh-huh. going to like completely like just diminish everything that my presentation right. is about. Like, well, why didn't you just click here? Right. <laughs> like, so I'm always so terrified that I'm going to have to revise or completely redo my presentation <sighs> because you know, that's, the way well, that it just happens is you get the last time slot on the last day. Let me tell you a story, Dana, and this has been told to me several times by Brian Mackey, um, that they take the best speakers and put them in the very first slot and the very last slot. Because the very first slot, you got to get people excited because it's first thing in the morning going. And the mm-hmm. very last slot, they need somebody that's got a great topic and lots of energy so that people that are waiting to get out and get to that bar and carry on to keep them enthralled. So getting the very last slot is really a bit of a, a tip of the hat to you. Oh. Well, thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. I had a... <laughs> but I had a wonderful experience, my first and only AU, and I was definitely looking forward to going back. But we'll have to do it virtually, right? And yeah. hopefully we'll see everybody there. I would love to see in the comments what everybody is looking forward to learning in 2021 or even at this AU. Right, so right. Their favorite courses. Yeah, I want to know. I was going to say, I've even seen a few um, virtual AU parties popping up on LinkedIn for uh, really? vendors that are hosting uh, online happy hours uh, on the week of AU that you sign up I, have discussions. I signed up for a, for a vendor happy hour, not at AU, but a different one, where they actually sent us whiskey for whiskey tasting. They, nice. They sent me five... Two out, two and a half ounce bottles of different Japanese whiskeys. Oh, I want to go to that happy hour. Yeah, and then, and cool. they also sent us cheese, but it was in the middle of summer in Las Vegas, so the cheese didn't quite make it. That's so like I, living in the neighborhood that gives you the full candy bars on Halloween. Yes, we used to do that when we gave away candy in Halloween. We would give away the full yeah. Hershey bar. Nice. Yes. Oh. One last little story, and then you and then you can go. This is Halloween this year. The ring, I got the I got the ring doorbell, and so I'm uh, still working as I do, and uh, the doorbell rings, and so I have it play the video on my little Echo Show, so I can see the the video in in here. And this this little girl, she had to been probably three, maybe four at the at the most. 
she looks in the candy bowl and sees all of that we had um Hershey's um take fives. Have you ever had a Hershey's take five? I haven't. Oh, I have. It's, they're good. They're to live for. Anyway, she reaches in and grabs four or five of these take fives. And the big sister comes up who can read and reads the sign that we have a sign that says touch one, take one. And um, she reads the sign and says, oh, you're only supposed to take one. And the little girl says, I only, I'm only going to take one. And she reaches in and grabs one more and puts it in her bag and away she goes. <laughs> Very nice. It was so funny. She already took five, and then oh, no. Go ahead. I, I'm only going to take one. <laughs> Takes one more and leaves. <laughs> it was great. And on that note, we will call it a BIM thoughts, and we will talk to you again very, very soon. We hope. And if you are downloading a bunch of these and binging, well, then we're going to talk to you like right now.